Imagine spending nearly two decades orbiting Mars and recording every detail with a camera capable of revealing textures small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. That's exactly what the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has been doing. Among its instruments, the high-rise camera has photographed vast stretches of the Martian surface in ultra-high definition, revealing a planet that, up close, is anything but monotonous. Today, we're going to see what Mars looks like from above. We'll focus on the colossal scar that cuts across Mars from west to east, Valles Marineris. Picture a canyon that, in some places, plunges about 7 kilometers below the plateau and stretches for more than 4,000 kilometers, like crossing a continent by following nothing but cliff edges. The journey begins in Noctis Labyrinthus, a maze of interwoven valleys at the far west, and continues until it reaches, on the opposite side, a system that resembles outflow channels, as if water had once found an escape route toward an ancient ocean. The Mola elevation map makes this hypothesis even more tempting, with relief changes that seem to point to flows running downhill and spreading out. Before we dive into the abyss, it's worth anchoring our intuition with a real sense of scale. When we say 7 kilometers deep, the mind tends to accept it and move on. But how huge is that really? In the images we're about to walk through, there's a black and white shot of the plateau above the rim that measures roughly 5 kilometers from one side to the other. When we zoom in, the color version corresponds to a 1 kilometer crop. Keep that mental ruler handy. It will follow us around, as if we had an imaginary drone that always knows what those pixels mean. Approaching the break in the terrain, the landscape drops away. It's like standing before a stage where the curtain suddenly falls. The relief splits open to reveal walls with exposed strata, layers of rock emerging from beneath the dusty mantle. The difference in tone isn't decoration. It marks different materials, distinct geological processes preserved in slices. Interestingly, as we descend, the palette gets richer. Tones appear that contrast with the dominant reddish-brown, as if the canyon were storing a multicolored archive of the past. And there are frozen movements there. Wind-polished marks that never stop sanding the surface, tracks left by blocks that broke off and rolled, etching lines into the dust. At a certain point, the terrain seems to steady. But don't be fooled. We still haven't reached the true bottom. Even if you're seeing this scene for the first time, it's breathtaking. The scale of it distorts our sense of proportion. Moving along the walls, we reach a cliff face in Ganges Chasma. Here, wind erosion has worked like a patient sculptor, wearing down the weaker material and leaving darker, tougher layers associated with ancient lava flows. It's as if threads of basalt were peeking out from under the dust, hard and resistant. At the top of the cliff, on the plateau, a light-colored mineral deposit sits like an offset cap and it feels precarious, as if that section could give way at any moment. It's interesting to compare these jagged, chipped, uneven levels, full of sharp edges, with other bands that are smoother yet surprisingly firm a few levels up. A plausible interpretation. Sediments laid down by water, compacted over time, which now withstand wind abrasion better than the surrounding dust. As we follow the wall, these light deposits multiply, streaked as if someone had dragged a pale piece of chalk across dark rock. And what's happening down on the canyon floor? The scene is familiar, and at the same time alien. Dunes sweep across the bottom like solid waves, but they're not the beach sands we know. In daily life, silica-rich sand tends to be pale yellow or orange. Here, the composition shifts the hue. Grains rich in iron and magnesium darken the carpet, as if the ground were made of powdered metal. In another patch of the floor, back in Noctis Labyrinthus, clusters of dunes spread out and everything seems tinted a strange green. It's not lighting or a trick of the sun. The most accepted explanation is the presence of clays, minerals that record interaction with water at some point in the past. Notice the depressions, too. The dunes occupy natural troughs, as if they flow into the low spots. Small craters pepper the terrain, many filled with sand, reinforcing the idea that the material migrates and piles up wherever it can. Moving to another area of the labyrinth, a striking contrast appears. Dark minerals resting atop pale dunes, creating an almost graphic pattern. A recent impact left a small crater nearby, a crisp scar. Then comes a geometric curiosity that begs a pause. A mesa, a flat-topped, steep-sided block elevated above the surroundings. This one is about 400 meters across, tiny compared with the grandeur of Valles Marineris, yet still eye-catching. 
And it isn't alone. Several similar mesas appear on the floor of Noctis Labyrinthus, like dining tables abandoned in a gigantic hall. If the geological variety impresses you, wait until you see a stretch where the diversity jumps out. Beyond the scattered clays, much brighter areas appear, which researchers interpret as hydrated materials, that is, minerals that contain water in their structure. To the west of the scene, ancient volcanoes sit. In their fiery days, it's not hard to imagine eruptions melting accumulated ice on the valley floor, allowing water to run off and seep into the subsurface, chemically altering the terrain. Scenes like this are a reminder that Mars hasn't always been the dry world we see today. The planet had more dynamic chapters, perhaps with water flowing and laying down layers that the wind now reveals. In Melas Chasma, another sector of Valles Marineris, there's an image made for posters, a stunning example of folds cropping out at the surface. Typically, such structures form at depth, where heat and pressure need layers like bread dough. So why do we see such exposed folds here, so close to the planet's skin? One elegant hypothesis says the deposits were already soft and deformable when they were compressed. Imagine waterlogged sediments or ice-rich layers undulating under stress. And that wind erosion later cleared out the filling around them, leaving the fold patterns on display. The result is like a cliff cross-section where you can read history in curves, science and aesthetics in the same frame. To close our tour, a scene that needs no scientific justification and speaks straight to intuition, a small mountain range standing apart from its surroundings. Up close, the image is hypnotic. The long shadows emphasize the height of the peaks. They rise abruptly from the canyon floor, like stone islands that resisted all the processes that cut everything else down. It's the kind of scene where the light does the storytelling. Even without a ruler, the contrast tells you there are dramatic drops, sharp summits, and slopes that plunge. If you've made it this far, you've likely realized it. Valles Marineris isn't just a big hole. It's a mosaic of overlapping geological stories. Lava frozen in layers, sediments perhaps laid down by water, clays that hold the memory of wet environments, hydrated materials that gleam in the Martian sun, dark dunes pushed by the wind, mesas that withstand erosion, folds that seem to belong deep underground yet crop out like pages of a book. Each high-rise frame adds nuance, answers questions, and of course, raises others. Who would have thought a canyon could be so expressive? It's worth recapping our scale ruler, the one that keeps your eye from getting lost. Remember the black and white image five kilometers wide and the one kilometer color crop when we zoomed in? Using that reference over and over is what turns beautiful into understandable. You start noticing that a subtle fissure is as wide as a city, that a rolling block leaves a groove big enough to fit several football fields, that a dune could swallow a building. Suddenly, the mind stops underestimating the numbers. When we say seven kilometers deep, we're talking about an inverted Everest on the walls of a canyon. And when we mention more than 4,000 kilometers long, it's almost like flying across the Atlantic. Except here, you're walking along the rim of a Martian cliff. Maybe the most thought-provoking part is to consider the transitions. From Noctis Labyrinthus, with its valleys crisscrossing like cul-de-sacs, to the outflow channels in the east, which look like paths carved by water escaping a broken dam. Mola, which measures elevations with precision, reinforces the story. The relief encourages runs toward lower areas, as if the terrain itself marked the routes water would have taken when water was present. Add to that the clays, hydrated materials, and layers that seem to have been laid down in a liquid environment, and the puzzle starts to look less speculative. We're not talking about an eternal river, but episodes, windows of time when ice melted by ancient volcanoes or by local climate shifts would have flowed, settled, evaporated, frozen again, and left clues we now decode from orbit. There's beauty in the small traces, too. The trails of sliding blocks. Can you imagine them shaking Mars's thin ground as they descended? Point to instability on the walls, gravity doing its inexorable work while the wind keeps sweeping away whatever can be carried off. The dunes reveal prevailing winds and hideaways where material accumulates. Small craters filled with sand give away the direction the grains are migrating. Even the difference in resistance between layers, rigid black lava versus softer dust and sediment, tells a tale of different times, eruptions, calms, and endless dust storms. And the mesas? They're like preserved tops that escaped planing, perhaps because they wear tougher caps. They sit there, 
isolated, with almost geometric edges, as if someone had cut them with a saw. In Melas Chasma, the folds invite you to ask, how? If we usually need depth to shape layers with heat and pressure, seeing waves at the surface suggests another path. Plastic, saturated materials being squeezed still near the top, maybe by loading and unloading of the terrain, by ice expanding and contracting, by local pushes. Then, millions of years of wind sculpting and revealing only what can endure. That's why so many people fall in love with planetary geology. It's not just reading what's written, it's reconstructing the act of writing. And after so much science, here's a moment for thanks. If these images impressed you as much as they impress me, here's that classic request that really helps creators of this kind of content. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and share it with someone you know who's also fascinated by distant worlds. Maybe we'll bring another video exploring one more of these captivating spots on Mars. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.